Hi, um, I am Sarwar Pablo, a researcher at a Robotic Research Lab under uh, the Department of uh, Computer Science of the University of Kaiserslautern, Lando. Uh, I am uh, working on a humanoid interactive robot named Emma. The robot uh, Ameka uh, is the generic name developed by a British based uh, company called uh, Engineering Arts. Uh, we use this robot as a front end meaning we have our own interaction system running on a separate computer and then we make connections uh, to the computer that is um, basically controlling the robot and then we send the control signals uh, to the embedded pc which is included on in the robot and then execute the uh, actions um, uh, by our dialogue management system so the robot um, Emma has 52 degrees of freedom uh, in its body out of which 18 degrees of freedom are uh, responsible for uh, the generation of facial expression. Since the robot has a lot of degrees of freedom, it has the possibility to uh, show more human-like gestures, postures or facial expressions. The motors that are responsible uh, for the generation of uh, facial expressions are um, triggered externally and we tweak uh, the parameters to make, uh, for example, one of the parameters could be uh, eyebrow razor or um, lip razor or there are many uh, parameters and a nice combination of the facial parameters make a realistic or human-like uh, facial expression and then we have a dialogue manager which um, can trigger uh, the robot's facial expressions body movements and the speech of the robot simultaneously this is important uh, because um, if there is a lag between speech and the body movement of the robot it is highly um, not human-like or not realistic. So to make it realistic, we use this um, dialogue management system, which is nothing but a finite state machine uh, that takes um, all the uh, control signals and execute the operations on the robot. The robot, of course, um, has a lot of sensors already built in. For example, it has uh, um, two cameras on its eyes. It has a camera uh, on the chest, which is a standard high definition camera. We also integrated a stereo vision camera uh, on the chest of the robot. In, in our research, we use basically this camera, the images from this camera. The microphone is connected to an external computer similar to um, visual sensor, uh, sensors. So all the computations of natural language is performed on uh, the external computer. And then we make, a, in a, we make an interface that communicates between these two um, computers. So it's a, a distributed uh, system. But the latency uh, in terms of uh, connectivity is uh, quite remarkable. We achieved a latency of around 834 milliseconds um, to um, get response from the robot. So in human-robot interaction, this is quite uh, nice because humans also don't take too much time to respond. So the robot is also expected to respond in a human-like manner. The robot uh, basically has uh, audiovisual perception skills, which means the robot uh, sees the world and the robot can also understand human um, utterances or human speech. So we basically need two kinds of sensors. One is uh, camera sensors, which uh, takes color images or depth images and then analyze the human and also the environment. Uh, at the same time, uh, the robot um, also uh, needs to understand what is uh, spoken, as I mentioned earlier. So we use a wireless microphone sensor, which uh, takes the user utterances as input. And then the user utterances, of course, the acoustic, uh, acoustic uh, features are converted into text and then um, 
we um, apply a lot of algorithms from natural language processing and then the robot generates a speech but we also have paralanguage so for example um, the pitch the energy or uh, the speech rate uh, of a person or the duration of um, the speech this we uh, also we calculate um, uh, these aspects with uh, various uh, libraries. At the same time, the robot um, with its visual sensors um, understands if somebody is um, attentive, if uh, the emotional state uh, on the face is positive, negative, happy, sad and so on. Um, and also the robot understands the activity of the uh, human based on um, skeletal movements. Additionally, uh, the robot can also read um, textual information. For example, if um, someone uses a badge um, uh, and his name is written on it, the robot can just read the badge and uh, call the person uh, uh, with the family name if, if uh, available on the badge. In terms of the environmental uh, awareness, the robot can um, detect objects, of course, around um, the interaction partner. In our uh, experiments we have um, uh, already implemented some uh, computer vision algorithms that uh, detect particular objects and the robot can um, react on such objects. So when, when the robot um, brings the person close, uh, closer uh, proximity, uh, the robot asks the person about his or her name and then um, face recognition uh, uh, process is applied and in this way the robot can uh, remember a particular person and um, uh, the mental model of each person is loaded um, uh, based on the availability of data. The robot also estimates um, possible age, possible gender or um, if the person is making eye contact or if the person is looking away or uh, looking up or um, looking down or not paying attention for example and um, several uh, body movements for example um, postures or gestures or uh, head poses are also um, estimated by the robot with the uh, visual sensor the robot on a higher level uh, predicts uh, the personality possible personality of a human um, whether or not a person is extroverted or introverted or agreeable or self-centered and so on so we applied in our uh, research uh, five factor models uh, to make um, or to estimate a, a probable um, personality trait of uh, uh, the humans. Uh, PhD uh, thesis, I particularly focused on uh, the application of long term memory in interaction process. So what I mean by this is um, the robot should just not make interactions in an episode and forget everything. That's not human-like. So the robot should keep track of what went earlier, what is happening now, and what might uh, happen in the future. So I used a, a, a system which uh, takes all the uh, sensory inputs and then process the inputs and the robot just remember some crucial aspects of a person. Overall, um, I conducted experiment on some sub uh, test subjects where people interacted uh, with the robot um, on a session by session manner, which means they uh, interacted um, like today, then they again interacted a couple of days later and then again came and uh, the robot could make a kind of a relationship uh, with each and every individual taking care of the past information into account. So in our research, we have implemented several ways uh, to generate speech for the robot. So I implemented a chatbot that takes um, user utterances and inputs and then uh, tokenize the inputs into uh, uh, some keywords. And then I have a knowledge base for the robot which um, has a lot of predefined response for the robot. But based on the keyword, the robot simply look for possible 
uh, responses in the knowledge base. From the knowledge base, uh, the robot selects the appropriate uh, response. We have also uh, integrated um, uh, large language models or Wikipedia uh, for the generation of robot speech. Uh, let's say the chatbot has not enough information uh, what the interaction partner or the human is asking for. Then the robot looks in the internet or looks in the Wikipedia to find relevant information or piece of information and then bring it to the uh, chatbot system. Uh, this is also possible and uh, in this way we make the uh, speed generation process more um, dynamic. This is all about our robot Emma and um, some technical details of the robot. We have also other robots and you can follow us uh, on YouTube or Facebook or other social medias. Thank you very much once again. Bye.